The Caucasian War, spanning from 1817 to 1864, was a protracted and brutal conflict fought between the Russian Empire and various indigenous peoples of the Caucasus region, primarily the Chechens, Circassians, and Dagestanis. The war is often regarded as one of the longest and most grueling campaigns in Russian military history. It had profound and lasting effects on the Caucasus, shaping the region's political, social, and cultural landscape. The Caucasus, a region nestled between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, has historically been a land of great strategic importance. Its rugged terrain, diverse population, and position as a crossroads between Europe and Asia made it a region of intense interest for various empires throughout history. By the early 19th century, the Russian Empire, under the rule of the Romanov dynasty, was expanding its influence and territorial control across the Caucasus. The motivations for this expansion were multifaceted, including the desire to secure Russia's southern borders, access to warm water ports, and the strategic imperative to prevent rival powers such as the Ottoman Empire and Persia from gaining influence in the region. The war began in earnest in 1817, when General Alexei Yermolov was appointed as the commander of Russian forces in the Caucasus. Yermolov, a seasoned military officer, was tasked with the difficult mission of subjugating the fiercely independent and largely Muslim peoples of the North Caucasus. He adopted a strategy of ruthless repression, including the destruction of villages, mass deportations, and the systematic use of terror. His approach was characterized by the construction of a series of forts and military roads designed to penetrate the mountainous terrain and encircle the indigenous populations. Yermolov's methods were brutal, but initially effective, and by the early 1820s, the Russian Empire had gained control over much of the Western and Central Caucasus. However, the Eastern Caucasus, particularly the regions inhabited by the Chechens and Dagestanis, proved to be much more resistant. The mountainous terrain, combined with the fierce independence and guerrilla tactics of the local populations, made it difficult for the Russian forces to maintain control. The Chechens, under the leadership of figures such as Sheikh Mansur and later Imam Shamil, mounted a fierce and sustained resistance against Russian encroachment. Sheikh Mansur, a Chechen religious and military leader, was one of the earliest and most prominent leaders of the resistance. He preached a message of jihad against the Russian invaders and managed to unite various tribes and clans in a common cause. Although Mansur was eventually captured by the Russians in 1791, his legacy lived on and inspired future generations of fighters. The most iconic leader of the Caucasian resistance was Imam Shamil, a Dagestani Avar who emerged as the leader of the anti-Russian forces in the 1830s. Shamil was a skilled military strategist and a charismatic leader who managed to unite various ethnic and religious groups under his banner. He proclaimed a theocratic state known as the Imamate, which was governed according to Islamic law, and led a protracted guerrilla war against the Russian Empire. Shamil's forces, known as the Murids, were highly disciplined and employed hit-and-run tactics, ambushes, and other forms of irregular warfare to great effect. Shamil's leadership and the resilience of his followers made the Eastern Caucasus a constant thorn in the side of the Russian Empire for nearly three decades. The war in the Caucasus was marked by extreme violence and atrocities committed by both sides. The Russian forces, frustrated by the stubborn resistance of the Caucasian peoples, often resorted to brutal methods to break their will. Entire villages were razed to the ground, and their inhabitants were either killed or deported to other regions of the empire. The use of scorched-earth tactics, where crops and livestock were destroyed to starve the population into submission, was a common practice. The Caucasian fighters, for their part, also committed acts of violence against Russian soldiers and settlers, including raids, ambushes, and assassinations. The war was not only a military conflict, but also a clash of cultures and religions, with the Russian Orthodox Christian Empire pitted against the predominantly Muslim peoples of the Caucasus. The Russian Empire's efforts to conquer the Caucasus were further complicated by the involvement of external powers. The Ottoman Empire, Persia, and Britain all had interests in the region, 
and provided varying degrees of support to the Caucasian resistance at different times. The Ottomans and Persians, both Muslim-majority empires, were natural allies of the Caucasian Muslims and provided material and logistical support to the resistance. Britain, motivated by its rivalry with Russia and its own imperial interests in the region, also offered some support, particularly to the Circassians in the Western Caucasus. The involvement of these external powers added an additional layer of complexity to the conflict and prolonged the war. Despite the fierce resistance and the challenges posed by the terrain and external interference, the Russian Empire gradually gained the upper hand. By the mid-19th century, the Russian military had adopted new tactics and technologies, including the use of steam-powered gunboats to patrol the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea, and the construction of more advanced fortifications and roads. The leadership of figures like General Nikolai Muravyov and General Mikhail Vorontsov also played a crucial role in the eventual Russian victory. Vorontsov, in particular, pursued a more pragmatic and less brutal approach than Yermolov, focusing on winning the loyalty of local elites and employing a combination of military force and diplomacy to bring the region under Russian control. The turning point in the war came in the late 1850s when Russian forces managed to capture Imam Shamil's stronghold in the village of Ghanib in Dagestan. Shamil, recognizing the futility of continued resistance, surrendered to the Russians in 1859. His capture marked the effective end of the organized resistance in the Eastern Caucasus, although sporadic fighting continued in some areas for several more years. Shamil was treated with a degree of respect by the Russian authorities and was allowed to live out his remaining years in relative comfort in Kaluga, a town near Moscow. The final phase of the Caucasian War involved the subjugation of the Circassians in the Western Caucasus. The Circassians, like the Chechens and Dagestanis, had resisted Russian rule for decades, employing guerrilla tactics and taking advantage of the mountainous terrain. However, by the early 1860s, the Circassians were largely isolated and faced overwhelming odds. The Russian military, now fully committed to the conquest of the region, launched a series of devastating campaigns that culminated in the mass deportation of the Circassian population. Hundreds of thousands of Circassians were forced to leave their homeland and were relocated to the Ottoman Empire, where many perished due to disease, starvation, and harsh conditions. This tragic event, often referred to as the Circassian Genocide, marked the final chapter in the Caucasian War. The war officially ended in 1864, when the Russian Empire declared victory, and the Caucasus was fully incorporated into the empire. The end of the war marked the beginning of a new era for the region, characterized by the imposition of Russian rule, the spread of Russian culture and language, and the suppression of local traditions and customs. The war had a profound and lasting impact on the peoples of the Caucasus, leading to the displacement of entire populations, the destruction of traditional ways of life, and the erosion of local identities. The memory of the war and the resistance against Russian rule continues to resonate in the Caucasus to this day, shaping the region's complex and often contentious relationship with Russia. In conclusion, the Caucasian War was a pivotal and transformative event in the history of the Caucasus and the Russian Empire. It was a conflict marked by extraordinary resistance, brutal repression, and profound suffering. The war not only reshaped the political and social landscape of the Caucasus, but also left a lasting legacy of trauma and resentment that continues to influence the region's history and its relationship with Russia. The stories of figures like Sheikh Mansour, Imam Shamil, and the countless others who fought and died in the war remain a powerful testament to the enduring spirit of resistance and the desire for freedom among the peoples of the Caucasus.